Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for GWBC Radio's Open for Business. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of GWBC's Open for Business, and today's going to be a fun one. I have with me today Kim McKeeman, and she is with McKeeman Communications. Welcome. Thanks so much. Happy to be here. Well, Kim, before we get too far into things, tell us about your work. How are you serving folks? Yeah, so we um, actually are a public relations and integrated marketing communications agency. And so when I first started out, and it was the guest bedroom of our starter house, we were really focused on just working with the news media for our clients, community outreach. And over the years, you know, what we're doing now, our marketing's really evolved with social media, with messaging, with internal and external communication. So we kind of almost serve as like a, a business's marketing quarterback, kind of calling the plays, but making sure that all of their marketing is kind of working hand in hand. Now, do you find over the years that uh, marketing, advertising, PR, that communications really is the best word to describe all that? There's a blurring of the lines of where one begins and one ends now. Yeah, you are speaking my language. Yes, <laughs> no doubt. And it's just having seen it evolve over the years, um, extremely blurred. I think communications actually is probably the best way to describe it because it, that involves, you know, not only, you know, what you're doing in a paid capacity, and that's really an area we don't specialize in, but also like, you know, the earned, you know, what you what you do by like, gosh, doing, doing um, interviews like this. Um, and, and some of the other, um, ways that you really show up for your customers, so much of communications, you know, can, can be tied back to, um, you know, just so many different realms from social media to internal communications to external. So it's, um, it's definitely been, you know, again, a wild ride as it evolves, but it's been fascinating at the same time. Now, as part of your work, uh, since you mentioned not kind of, leaning into the paid part of the work, um, how do you manage the expectations of your clients when it comes to earned where there's some things that are just not out of your control, no matter how good the story is or how interesting the client is? How do you kind of uh, help them understand uh, that you just got to keep working at this and this is something that is a long-term kind of investment? That's the million-dollar question, right? Um, So... Um, it is, it's, it's basically really, we, we find so much of what we do is educating, um, our clients in t- as what makes a story. And right now is a, is a great example where like, oh, I've got this really great promotion going on and we've got to kind of say, Hey, that's not where folks heads are at. Um, and I think part of that to your, you know, to your question is, is we start out with a good relationship with our client and that's how we kind of vet our best fit. Um, you know, partners is to make sure they're folks that are open to, you know, really the expert expertise that, that we bring um, and open to being educated and learning about really what makes news. And then by the same token, you know, knowing that, Hey, if some, you know, th- there's breaking news, you know, all bets are off, you know, that there's, you know, th- that's, those are to your point outside of, you know, our control. So I will, I will say we've had some really good experiences over the years in um, not only, you know, not only um, ensuring that they're clear about that going in, but really delighting them when we're able to really hit on a story that, that folks really want to hear more about and, and getting our clients to, to really hone their messaging um, so they're good spokespeople. Now, how are you counseling your clients regarding the pandemic in terms of um, some people are going, you know, underground and waiting this out. Some people are saying we still got to let people know we exist. Other people are like, well, that's not appropriate to really be salesy nowadays. Some people are like, well, I'm going to just be educational. But then you get some people are feeling overloaded with how much COVID-19 information can a human, you know, consume? <laughs> like how, how are you kind of threading the needle here? Yeah. It's, and it's interesting because one of the things that we've always told our team and, our, and we've got a great team is, um, you know, we're, you know, we're our own client. So we have to, if we're going to, you know, we, we are living through this as well, along with a lot of our clients. Interestingly enough, um, we, uh, we specialize in food, restaurant, beverage, retail. So 
kind of a little foreshadow on, you know, yes, we've taken our hits too. So it's kind of been, a, we've been working on parallel paths and saying, you know, like what, the, how they need to show up. Um, and by the same token, we're, we're taking that same medicine, if you will, and saying, this is how we need to show up. So it is a, it, it has evolved, um, where, you know, my initial, my initial counsel to them was now is not the time to sell. And I started thinking about that a little bit more like, no, actually people need some of what our, you know, our clients have. And it's, and I think the the key thing that, that I think is a key takeaway, um, that our, our, our customers have said is, you know, like they really appreciate when we say you have a, a unique gift, skill, or ability or talent or asset. And in some cases that's food. How do we connect that food with the need at hand? And I think that's really the biggest thing. And, and that's the thing that kind of gets us really excited is figuring out how to connect somebody's God given talent, gift, or asset with where the need exists right now, and then use your marketing and your storytelling to support that and to connect those dots. Now, how was the remote part? Uh, had you already been working uh, with your team in a remote capacity or was this a new transition for you? Yeah. So that's another interesting thing. I keep telling my team, like we were built for this. So when we started our business, um, gosh, this is our 25th anniversary year, but when we started our business 25 years ago, um, we started um, as a remote part-time work from home agency, which was way, well against the grain at the time. But I had just a, a wonderful talent pool that I was able to pull from of other and primarily working moms or moms that that wanted to, to balance it. So we operated remotely, um, although we would get together, we were all in the same state. Um, we would get together, but we worked remotely with our clients for a good 12 years. So um, we had been doing this. And then to this day, even though we have physical offices, we still have um, a, a cadence of working from home two days a week. And that's just, it's kind of, it's kind of just based on what I like to do. Um, and I figure it's something that we can afford to other people. So it hasn't been that challenging for folks. It's actually been kind of fascinating to watch our clients adapt to it and have them realize, gee, I don't need to have Kim and her team in person for us to you know, really connect and understand and you know, get the work done. Now, any lessons or tips you can give to the new um, manager or leader that's uh, do, dealing with a remote situation? What are some kind of must do's and some uh, don't do's. Yeah, great question because we we, just, we have a lot of clients that are in that boat right now. Um, and it's funny we we developed even even with us already being remote um, in a in a heartbeat developed a, a business continuity plan um, that involved you know really focusing on your people, your customers, and how you want to show up for your community. So in terms of people. And working remotely, um, you know, I think everybody and their brother has at least one Zoom account now. So, um, you know, as much as we've we've um, leaned on in person and conference calls, I think that's one of the beautiful things that comes out of this is that turn on that camera and get face to face, um, and and let's kiss the uh, the the conference call goodbye right now is a good time to really flex that muscle and be comfortable with showing up on camera. People, you know, like, and again, internally for your teams, they don't care that you haven't had a shower yet. They don't care. They want to be reassured by seeing you in person. So I think that's definitely thing one. Um, let, um, definitely over communicate at this point, people need to be reassured. So when you're working from home and you're not able to be, you know, right next to your, your normal workmates, um, being able to, um, open, you know, like we've been, we've been leaning heavily on Slack. Um, that's another communication channel that is a lot more informal, but it also kind of separates things. Um, you know, as much as you can over communicate without inundating. And then lastly would be just encourage open, honest, um, feedback and conversation. That's something that we do ongoing anyway, but um, you've got to look for where your, you know, your, your folks may be, you know, coming across some pain points and either working from home or just dealing with everything that's going on. Um, we do the same thing with our clients. So we're doing, you know, very high touch point with them 
and, and look for those pain points where we can at least relate, listen, and possibly support. Now, how do you help uh, your team and your clients uh, avoiding some of this burnout that's beginning to happen where, you know, like this new normal is just becoming the normal and that, you know, all the days are coming together. It's hard. You know, someone said Monday's Memorial Day. What are you doing? And it's like, you know, every day's Memorial Day. It feels like, you know, it's hard to tell the like weekends. Dif- right. It's hard to say the weekend's different than the weekday. It's like a big blur. How do you exactly. ha- prevent that 24-7 kind of mentality to creep in for some folks. Yeah, that's, and that's such a great point. And I think for anybody out there who's a business owner, we all kind of have that type A personality and we, we tend to hire some of those type A personalities where we've got to actually say, okay, folks, it's time to time to turn it off, close the computer and step away. And um, it was interesting because when I first put together our continuity plan and I have a wonderful VP that I'm able to bounce things off of. I, I was actually going to say, okay, we're going to man, we're going to mandate that people take time off and it's just going to be extra time off. And I went, well, I don't know that I can really do that. <laughs> I'm not sure that's really legal, but um, I, uh, we, what we have done though is um, we are really, it's funny. We, we all keep each other accountable. And if we see somebody who is sending emails, you know, into the evening or working too early, we will very nicely call them out on that. Um, I will tell you one thing that we did recently because I, I could tell, you know, it was wearing on me and it, I could tell it was wearing on our team. I, you know, we had our normal Monday morning call with our company ops team. And I said, I need a vacation. <laughs> I think everybody else said the same thing. I said, why don't we do this? Why don't we do um, a guess what? It's going to be a um, gift of grace that we give to our entire team on Friday. We're going to call it happy Friday and we're, ta- we're all taking it off. Um, and, and I think that just gave everybody kind of like this nice big breath. Um, granted now folks still did check their emails, but, um, but I think sometimes you just, you have to set that tone and say, it's okay. You know, we, we all are feeling the burn, the burn and churn and the whirl and it's okay. And, and we have to kind of, you know, like say, it's time to step away and take a break. Right. And, and being the leader and giving them permission and then letting them know that you're doing it, it kind of gives it that okay like this is it really is okay it's not like just people saying it's okay right I'm, I'm not just talking about this like no we're actually doing it people right so now tell me about uh gwbc how did you find out about them and why was it important for you to get involved yeah so this is great um we again having been in business for a while um we went we did go for our certification um, you know, the women owned business certification. And that was a fabulous process that we went through having folks um, come to our, you know, actually to our location and then just learning about all the benefits. And for any of the business owners out there that feel like they are, you know, really just having to learn so much about everything on the fly. Um, it, it's, it's really important to use your resources. And that's what we've really seen, you know, with, with um, Jebby D- W, I'm sorry, Gene WBC is just the, the proactive information that's that's been shared, and whether it's you know just networking with some of the other um, businesses, whether it's you know having to to navigate this PPP thing. I have learned more about um, about tax law and finance than I have ever learned, and much of that is due to the information that that y'all have been providing. So I, um, I just think again, have, have really been a, a wealth of information and would encourage folks to, you know, seek that out. Um, you know, even if you are members and you're, you're not using the resources, definitely do that. You will cut a lot of time out of your daily schedule. And, and again, just, it's always about maximizing your resources and this is a really good one. Now, getting back to your work, how do, um, what's your recommendation for your clients now? Is there some people that are um, kind of just saying, I just want to survive this, and there's other people that are saying, hey, there's opportunity here to grow. Um, like, how are you kind of helping each of your clients kind of get the most out of the situation? Yeah, that's, and that's great. And of course, I'm going to use that. Um, I think there's there's probably 15 dreaded words right now that we just keep hearing over and over, and one of those is pivot. And I once at one time said, I don't want to hear that word again. I said, I just got to embrace it. It's, it's what we're doing. And um, so 
so basically it's been interesting and that's, I guess I'm in business because I find so much of, you know, like what you do in, in times of uncertainty, fascinating. And um, so we, you know, we, we're encouraging that just like we are for ourselves. We're, you know, we're, we're leaning in and doing things a little bit differently. Um, And, but we're also being very mindful of, you know, if you are um, an industry that, that, you know, look largely has been selling hamburgers. It's not time to get into, you know, and you're in your quick service restaurant. It's not time to get into full service. Like some pivots just don't make sense. Um, but, but really making sure that any of the changes that they're doing are fulfilling those needs. It kind of goes back to taking the gifts that you have, the assets, your God-given talents, and making sure they fulfill a need. So we have a restaurant company or a restaurant um, uh, independently owned uh, business that's um, headquartered in Charlotte and they've got 30 locations. And I loved this. Um, they started doing grocery essentials because let's face it, who knows why, but toilet paper is like gold now. And, um, and some of the other things that you just can't find. And they started doing a grocery essentials program and it was, you know, it really was a godsend for a lot of, um, folks in the greater Charlotte area. We've got another client that has been doing, um, you know, water and mold remediation. Don't be jealous, people. And it's, a, it's a very interesting, different client for us. But um, water and mold remediation, but they are set up as an essential business because they're used to treating um, biohazardous situations. So now they're offering a um, deep cleaning um sanitizing um, opportunity that um, basically was used the same, same solutions same chemicals, same, um, you know, EPA approved processes that was used in treating uh, places that were, you know, had experienced SARS. So we've seen some really fascinating ones, but I, I would say the, the one thing, again, just to kind of go back to that one message, which is make sure whatever they're doing in marketing fulfills a critical human or essential need right now that, that people, um, you know, are really hungry for. And if it aligns with your superpower, all the better. Exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's a win all the way around. So if somebody wanted to learn more about your firm um, and get on your radar, is there a website? Yes, indeed. We are um, McKeemancommunications.com. Um, and uh, the other thing, you know, obviously you can find us on any of the social channels, um, McKeemancom, at McKeemancom on Instagram. Um, and interestingly enough, we're doing, this is, this is one of our changes that we've doing. We started doing um, an Instagram live after lunch every week. Uh, which is brand spanking new for us. And we've had to really lean into it. But any of our, our social channels, you Google McKeeman Communications, we will pop up. Good stuff. Well, Kim, thank you so much for sharing your story. And that's McKeeman, M-C-K-E-E-M-A-N, communications.com. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Thanks so much. And um, appreciate the opportunity to kind of share our experiences and definitely have, have learned, have loved hearing about the other ones as well that you guys have been sharing. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on GWBC Open for Business.